you can think of it as IOUs or I mean, credit is really the technical term. So it's like sending credit to your friends, sending credit to your peers. Uh, that credit's backed by you. That and that credit back- can be used by other people That's in right. your network. Because you have a trust network, that credit can route through your peers to other people that you're not directly connected to. And that credit limit is essentially your reputation within a trust network. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you're, yeah, your reputation is determined by your community. Your credit rating, right? Your community right. credit rating right. is determined by your peers, you know, and, you know, by the value that you bring to community, not just like the profit that you bring to a bank. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Sovereign States of Mind, brought to you by a family in paradise. That is my family. We live off grid in Hawaii. We're working on developing a homestead, trying to become as autonomous as possible and be responsible for our own lives. Our YouTube channel videos are generally lots of fun. Quick, quick, quick. The podcast is a way for us to get deeper into some of these topics. We'll be exploring some of the many principles of personal sovereignty and how we can explore and implement them into our lives from homesteading to community building and self-reliance to Bitcoin, covering money and being sovereign over your own wealth with some sprinkles of parenting, fitness, authentic relating and gratitude tossed in the mix. No sponsors as of yet. So let's dive right into this week's conversation. Sovereign states of mind. Well, sovereignty is really freedom and interdependence within a community, uh, a community that is resilient and self-serving, self-sufficient, not uh, seeking outside of that community or uh, not seeking authority to make things right, you know, taking care of things ourselves, taking care of things within our community uh, without... uh, which is calling the police or calling the uh, calling your politician and trying to have rules changed in order to meet your needs. Um, yeah, so- sovereignty is uh, yeah, growing your own food as a community, uh, uh, getting your own services, having your own money, right? Having your own uh, um, communication networks, having your own re- resilience networks. Uh, that's what I think of when I think of sovereignty. Mm. So let's separate it a bit here. What is the personal sovereignty of the individual? How does that play into the sovereignty of a community? What do individuals need to, to have, so to speak? What do they need to, what characteristics do sovereign individuals have within a sovereign community? Hmm. Well, Sovereignty is an interesting idea. You know, humans are, I, I believe, naturally tribal um, uh, species. You know, we are social. We we need each other. We're inter- interdependent uh, with our community. Uh, as a sovereign individual, yes, we have a uh, the individual will to uh, make things work and to uh, thrive. Uh, you know, again, without um, uh, calling uh, upon your gigantor government to to save you, you know, as a sovereign individual, <laughs> we're saving ourselves. We're, you know, making, uh, pulling our boot, what do they call it? Pulling ourselves up by the bootstraps or whatever, right? right? And like doing it, doing it, growing our own food, making our own connections, creating our own uh, networks again, instead of just relying on the default networks, we're creating our own. Um, we're developing trust amongst our community, doing our own uh, permaculture on our personal properties, and as a uh, local community, you know, working on social permaculture and uh, developing. Again, uh, I am of the pers- perspective that humans uh, need each other that there's no sovereign individual mm. without um a community mm. like community is core to sovereignty community is a uh, core to sustainability and to um to freedom um but, but uh, in choosing a sovereign community we're choosing our own communities choosing our own networks not just relying on the the default um top down uh, chain or hierarchical 
authoritative uh, network. Oh, this, you know, uh, a good example would be relying on um, traditional financial networks Mm -hmm. as opposed to creating your own financial network or joining an open source financial community. So we find ourselves in a community that values a lot of aspects of sovereignty whether we consider ourselves a sovereign community or not is another is another question. But how do they start? So here, for example, I, feel like I was drawn here because of that. And even though the term sovereignty is fairly new to my life, like using it as a word and like realizing what that really entails for a human being is like, no, I want to be more sovereign with myself and realizing like, oh, I'm born into, like you said, these default networks of gigantic governments that tell me everything I need to do and how to do it and how to live and what to learn and what to do with my life. And like, I always was not into that, but I never associated that with the term sovereignty. Mm. So here I know that word is used a lot more frequently because it is a very sacred word, I think, and a very important term that people use. So do you know of any examples where these sovereign communities sprout up or you've traveled a lot within this this umbrella so uh here where we are on the big island uh, is a really good example um and i i see that we got to where we are because of a need uh we live in a interesting climate where we're on a volcano there's hurricanes there's tsunamis earthquakes um pandemics right (laughs) um you know we've here in on big island we've had in my experience here, the 10 years I've been here, it's been like kind of one disaster, one natural disaster <laughs> after another. Once we like heal up from one, another one is like ready, like on its tail, you know, whether it's hurricane or lava or pandemic. Um, we've just needed like I remember that you know, when I first got here, we had this like um, little what, what did we call it? The finger. There was like a finger of lava just like creeping out towards the main road that connects our town to the rest of the island. Right. Right. Yeah. And basically had that lava kept going, our town would have been cut off. But it magically from, stopped right before it. Yeah. Magically stopped station, right? right before it hit the main road. But we were all preparing. We were getting our uh, sovereignty groups together, our resilience mm. groups together, you know, having weekly meetups uh, and discussing how are we prepared for this? How are, you know, do we have our food resilience networks? Well, before in that, place. there's the question of, are we staying here or are we going to try to escape right. before yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've already decided we're staying here. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of people left, you know, uh, anybody that had uh, health issues dependent on hospitals, things like that, they all left. Like they were not going to wait sure. around and see if the lava was going to take our road out. No, they had to get out of here because there's, we don't have a hospital down here. We right. don't have access like that. Um, so people that were seriously in need, they left. Uh, but me, my family, we stayed. Um, I mean, fortunately, the road did not get cut off, but we were all preparing. Sure. Like, uh, yeah, meeting up regularly, uh, creating resilience groups, resilience hubs, um, uh, clarifying our food sovereignty networks mm. right and so do those still exist since the, the emergency uh, didn't happen or well, was it kind of just left by the wayside well um we it was left a little bit at that time but then we had another it plants these seeds yeah, yeah. then we had a hurricane like <laughs> you know uh a few months later yeah. and power was cut off <laughs> it, like my neighborhood wouldn't have power uh, and we had these giant trees blocking the roads. We literally couldn't leave my neighborhood for two weeks. Really? Yeah. And no power. You know, my house was on the grid at that time. So I was, uh, you know, just filling up buckets of water from catchment tank. We're all on catchment in our area anyway. That's another part of uh, what's unique about where we live is that. We have to be sovereign with our water, with our power. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Even if you're on the grid, it goes out. A lot of the subdivisions here were built without infrastructure, mm-hmm. without water, without power. Yeah. Which so. is awesome, which is why we love it. That's right. That's <laughs> <laughs> and, and yeah, we have like more permaculture, experimental farm, eco village type experiments going on. And we have less here. government giving a shit because That's of true. that lack of infrastructure. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Very few police. Um, 
a building code enforcement <laughs> is like enforcement of anything. Yeah, really. enforcement of anything is pretty <laughs> of private property. Yeah, in our community, we take care of ourselves. You know, if there's a fire in the neighborhood, you run and grab buckets and hoses and shovels. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, have you experienced that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, I mean, the fire department will make it eventually they'll come down <laughs> the house is down yeah they'll, they'll come down eventually but you know you gotta expect uh, an hour at least so yeah there's a fire it's like you're grabbing the buckets because you don't want i mean you want to help your neighbors but you know you don't want that fire to spread to the whole community right, right it's right. like you know we are interdependent whether you like it or not you know um yeah if there's a fire and you ignore it like that fire is just gonna spread and your house is gonna burn down too um, so yeah, we have to help each other. We have to look out for each other. We are, we are like intimately dependent on each other. Well, so going back to what you were originally saying about, uh, one disaster after another, I remember hearing, I wasn't here for the 2018 lava flow. Mm -hmm. I left right before I was staying with you actually. Oh yeah. Okay. Like, I left like a week before or something crazy, but, uh, they were telling me how over on the road, there were like camp, not camps, well, I guess kind of camp set up for distributing food to people yep a lot of people down in that area that i guess yeah kind of got were people blocked off from getting out yeah. at the time that people have to get like well or people made it out in time people made it out i have i mean i have a friend who you know stayed on his property until the very last just for minute. the story yeah <laughs> maybe just for the story but he actually had to boat out so it's like the lava's was coming there's no road so he, he had to take a boat out yeah <laughs> Yeah, this boat, you took it out. So, you know, that's just how it is. Like, uh, yeah, some people just love their lands. It's like. But these uh, these little community, uh, I don't even know what the term would be. Well, we be, had a resilience hub. That's what it was yeah. called. Yeah. Well, the, and they, it sprouts up when the need is there. Like, people are ready yeah. to be like, okay, let's go. Let's go help each other. Yeah. The hub is what we called it. Mm. And people could go there and get food. No questions were asked. Mm. It wasn't like a Red Cross, whatever. Oh, okay, let me see your documents. And you can <laughs> apply here. And da, 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 da. no, it was just our community. And then where did that food come from? From our community. Mm. Yeah. Donations. People donated. Yeah, there's no big infrastructure that came in and took care of us. You know? It reminds me of a book I've, I, I have it here somewhere. It's called uh, A Paradise Built in Hell. And it's all about the resilience community networks that sprout up in the wake of big disasters. So they oh. referenced like Katrina in New Orleans. Oh, yeah, I remember They that. referenced like the 1913 uh, San Francisco earthquake. I don't know what year it was exactly. Oh. And the Chicago fires and all these relevant examples. I love and, that theme, yeah. Yeah, how that just happens. And it doesn't matter anymore your social class, how wealthy you are or poor you are. It's like you're all just no, human. We got to take care of each other. We got to take in order to take care of ourselves, we got to take care of each other. So, uh, yeah, you just got to step up and do it because otherwise you don't have food. You know, we don't have ice to keep our <laughs> food cool. You know, right. We had our, yeah, that was one thing that happened for in our community. You know, the people that had the big solar freezers, they said, come over, you know, oh, put yeah. your water bottles in. You know, get get your ice packs mm. um, and take care of yourselves because, yeah, we were without power for a while uh, and it was tricky. And then we had a crew going around house to house with the generator saying, hey, we got the generator. Oh, yeah. You want to, um, you know, get some power, fill up your bathtub so you can flush your toilets. Mm. Right. And I don't know, like and yeah, they were just shouting. They were just. Shouting house to house, hey, we got the generator. You guys need a generator for an hour? <laughs> yeah, it's like you're in some developing country yeah. all of a sudden. Yeah, and, selling things on the street and, and not even selling. That was some play, you know, it's something I experienced too while in while traveling in developing mm -hmm. countries. I remember being in Thailand and I was staying in a, a small neighborhood and, you know, it was the fire situation. There was a fire mm -hmm. and I, I look outside. Everybody's running. There's people running, screaming. Five, five, five. Right. Everybody's running by screaming fire. Uh, so you come out and you go, what's going on? Oh, geez, there's a house on fire down the road. What do we do? OK, grab a bucket, grab a hose, grab a shovel and run over there and help with the bucket brigade. You yeah, know, because, <laughs> yeah, the fire department, they might come eventually, you know, but it's, yeah, not going to be for a while and they're probably not going to 
be able to help that much. I yeah. remember I lived in Bangkok when there were these big floods mm. flooding the whole oh, area. Yeah. 2011, I think it was. And uh, school was canceled. I was a teacher at the time. And like, so we were just wandering around kind of interested in like, what's going on in these flooded areas? And it turns out the whole thing was a conspiracy because they should have opened the levees and the Bangkok downtown should have flooded but they didn't and they let the suburbs just get destroyed. And so I took a bus out during that time and you just see people on little canoes, like just going through the streets. But I remember in downtown Bangkok in the spot where like, it was kind of like on the border, people just made their own roads out of like plywood or whatever it was. And you just walk on it. And I remember we were just like cruising around, like right through people's neighborhoods and houses. Mm. They just made these little roads like, yeah. I mean, saying that, I think, you know, sovereignty is really a mindset, too, of like, again, just not waiting for the authority authority to come fix things. You mm. know, it's like this is our community. We are all fundamental um, like pillars in our community holding it up and taking that responsibility, uh, claiming that responsibility and like. <laughs> That's, I think, the really crucial point here. It's not just taking the responsibility; it's acknowledging it. Yeah, it's 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 claiming it. Yeah, and we're yeah we're core we're core to this community. It's not a top down thing. Like we we're the ones holding it up. You know, we're the we're the power. We're uh, and you know, saying that too is like government is a reflection of us too, right? But, supposed uh, to be. Yeah. Right, supposed <laughs> to be. Um. But yeah, we can't just rely on these top down you right. know, uh, systems. You know, we got to just take care of ourselves. Like, get, yeah, I, I think there is a tendency in first, specifically in first world countries, probably to just take for granted that government's going to like take care of you and as if it's going to take care of you forever. Right. As if it cares about <laughs> as you. If, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> as if it actually cares about you. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but yeah, I mean, a uh, sovereign mindset, right? A sovereign individual is someone right. who's like, oh, something's up. What do I do mm -hmm. to take care of this, to help this, you know? Uh, and that might be calling the right people, right? That might be calling... Somebody yeah, sure. else, right? Yeah. Calling somebody who knows what they're doing more. But um it's about stepping up and taking the responsibility. I think of the example of um, oh, I don't remember the effect, but in a city where you, you go to a big city and if some, you know, some someone might be having, I don't know, an epileptic attack or something, right? And most people will just keep walking, assuming that somebody right. else is gonna take care of it. Um but it's a big mind shift to say, oh, no, I'm here. I'm here right now. I'm I see this happening. I got to take care of this because maybe nobody else will. Um, I think a lot of, a, you know, I that also ignited um, a memory in me, too. I have a couple of like, you know, purpose projects, you know, that I'm like that I drive. They're not really profitable things, but I. I push them and I market them and I promote them because uh, I don't, you know, other people don't see the value of them quite as much as I do uh, yet. Yet. That's right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They don't see the value of them quite as much as I, I do yet. And I'm the one it's like, you know, um, I'm I, I and personally, I'm a spiritual person. I'm like, I uh, believe that we have like sparks of life from like from the creator and we have like specific soul purpose here. And if we don't, uh, if that spark ignites and we don't like jump with it, burn with it, burn with it. Or, <laughs> or I think of like notes on a scale, you know, we all got our, our note, our overtone note that we're like good at playing or if you think of reeds blowing in the wind, you know, if uh, you're stagnant and you're not blowing with the wind, you're not singing with that song, you're not singing your note, not, um, yeah. Then the symphony is igniting isn't complete. That's right. The yeah. This isn't there. It's got to ignite your spark. Got to, you know, the hippies, you know, we say go with the flow. Right. But part of that flow is like when the spark ignites, you gotta, 
light with that individual spark. You got to well, ignite with that individual spark. And let's jump into there. I mean, one of the big reasons I'm taking this podcast so seriously and starting this YouTube channel is because that's my spark. And as many, I tried to be an entrepreneur and do all I, I, I just need to make content and share stories and talk. That's just like my spark and I can't help it. And I fought it for so long. I mean, I, I went with it for a while, but I didn't know how to like convert it into a livelihood because I didn't care. I didn't want to play those rules. And then after some time, it's like, okay, no, that's, that's my spark. That's what I got to follow. And to hell with how I make it work. Mm -hmm. Like it, it'll work. That's the spark. That's my hippiness, my spirituality coming in is just acknowledging after some time of kind of hiding from it and choosing to live in, I don't want to say fear, but living in the mentality of like, no, things got to make sense. You kind of got to be linear about how you're going to, you know, make money in this world, how you're going to pass something on to your kids and realizing that's just not the way I play. That's not, that's not how I believe the universe plays. Mm. That's not how I see it. Like, no, that, that spark needs to be followed. Yeah. Nobody's going to do Nobody's going to say the things that you're going to say except for you. Right. So you just got to uh, claim your sovereignty and believe in your uh, God-given authority. And that's, that's the biggest part right. is claiming it. That's been the hurdle for me all these years. And that's why I'm inspired to, to do this podcast. Mm. It's like, what is that sovereign? It, it manifests in so many different ways. We learn more about it all the time as we practice it and as i'm experiencing in more of my personal life is boundaries also like it, it exists on when we're relating that personal sovereignty mm -hmm. and really just acknowledging who my who i am with emotions mm -hmm. at any time it's not just about who i am with my food or my power or my water or with the government and my community it's about me and who i am yeah, showing choosing, up choosing who you spend your time with right it's saying no even to, when it's hard. Right. Saying yeah. no to. Accepting a no. And, or accepting a no. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> saying no, has been, it can be harder for me. Yeah. Depends it's on who like, it is, right? right. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, choosing who we spend our time with. That's like, yeah, that's core to self-sovereignty. Like not just going with the default. Right. right. It's like, yeah. oh, these are, this is who I grew up with. This is who I it's work easy. with. These are my friends and they always have been. What do I do? It's like, you know, the, the five people you spend the most time with are like who you become, right. you know, influence you more than anything in the world. So you want to choose, you just roll with the default people that you happen to grow up with or whatever as your closest friends is like. I mean, not to knock on the people we grow up with as friends, because I see them once in a while these days and I love sure. to see them <laughs> and they're great to see them. But, you know, there's just a reason. And I felt shame around this for a while. I'm like, like I went through this phase where I'm like, wow, I have like no more friends from when I grew up. Like, sure, like friends were friendly, but like we live across the country and never see them. A phone call once in a while. And I just felt like, oh, is that like kind of my fault for just throwing those relationships that's away? That's because a sovereign I individual. Because I didn't care anymore. <laughs> there was nothing there. It just kind of held me back. Uh, and now I just see it for what it is. Like there's value in it as, yeah, we grew up together. We share this. We'll always share that. Mm -hmm. But our lives have gone you know, different directions. And my sovereign self mm -hmm. has chosen a path that is not compatible. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and our parents influence too, you know, that's not just like government. It's just cultural, cultural influence, you know, like, oh, this is the way, this is what you do next. Now you, you know, all oh, you graduated high school. Now you go, you know, choose your college, right? Now you, you, you get a job, you get your career, right? Uh, Buy a house. Just, that's right. Now you get married, get your now mortgage. you get your house. Now you have a baby. <laughs> this is the order of things. And this is how it's always Aww. been. So like, why would you? But I tell you, now that I have kids, I'm like, man, if only I had followed that path, it'd probably be a bit easier. <laughs> no, 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 Jordan. We love our children. <laughs> <laughs> We love our children. That's for sure. We love them too much. <laughs> but yeah, sovereignty. Yeah, it's it's like really a choice and choosing, um, choosing to make our own decisions. I think like, uh, um, yeah, yeah, letting like deprogramming our our uh, unconscious commitments to yeah. uh, just rolling with um traditional structures or family structures or governments whatever you know 
mainstream culture, whatever it is, uh, religion, and just choosing your own way. <clears throat> so let's jump into the fun part. Money. Ooh, money, money, <laughs> money. So <laughs> I, I think one thing for me that I still process through a lot as like part of the Bitcoin community and, you know, like make sure you're financially sovereign, keep your money in something like Bitcoin instead of a bank, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. uh, that often <clears throat> overlooks a harsh reality for a lot of us, which is like savings. <laughs> what? I'm like, yeah, I keep my Bitcoin and like, I'm stoked to have it. I'm like, I'm never going to sell it. But then tough times come and I'm selling it. Right. Uh, and like, no, <laughs> but I, what can I do? Right. I'm not about to, uh, you know, I'm not about to pay the interest to the banks for my credit card. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe in some ways that would be saving money in the long run, but keeping the Bitcoin, I don't know, but I'm not about to to sign that contract again. But point is the whole, the whole Bitcoin thing is like, keep it in Bitcoin, you know, be sovereign over your wealth. But at the end of the day, that's not how a community stays sovereign is by, you know, people holding wealth, a community sovereign by there being economical transactions happening, keeping us in abundance of what we need. Totally. Isn't that the point of money to begin with is making totally. sure we have what we need. <laughs> yeah. Currency, keeping the current moving. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. Money is just a tool to encourage. Well, it should be a tool to encourage collaboration and encourage uh, communities to work together uh, to make, to be able to make peace um, in transactions without uh, um, having resentment or, wanting to steal from each other right right it's like instead of using war to you know get your needs met we use <laughs> money <laughs> and yeah if what did they say if if soldiers don't cross a border if goods don't cross a border soldiers will oh yeah right <laughs> currency as something communities require doesn't have to be this paper that governments issue to us that's right it, it seems crazy that uh you know in a country that that claims to be so individual focused as opposed to um uh globalist right um that we that our money is just so top down oriented you know created at the top and controlled uh so heavily um you know money really should be local in my view uh that's why i am the director and uh, main promoter of Villages IO community currency platform. So let's talk about community currencies. Yes. So, uh, so I'll say I'll say first, Bitcoin is a wonderful store of value, uh, wonderful technology uh, that I believe will guarantee um, many uh, individual freedoms, uh, freedom of privacy, freedom of association, uh, free the uh, right to own property. You know it. it it uh, has the potential to guarantee these rights and to protect them from go adversary governments, especially in places where you have to be concerned about adversary governments. Here in the United States, our government is a, is kind of gnarly, but compared to some of these places, I mean, we're very, very, very fortunate uh, to have such great economic and personal freedom. Um, we most people have no idea. We complain about the United States government, <laughs> but like most people have no idea how lucky we are. <laughs> yeah, I'm very lucky. Yeah. Um, and the narrative is that it's just going to keep getting worse, more dystopian, but I don't necessarily buy into that. Yeah. I think that's a lot of fear mongering to just sell people. Well, there's things we got to be aware of. Oh, no, for sure. Right? We got to be aware of it. Things we got to keep. But even fighting, the Bitcoin narrative. Fighting to protect. We got to keep fighting to protect our rights. Yeah. For and sure. maybe that's the exaggeration is needed. Uh, right. In order for this awareness to come out. But sometimes it is a bit, I think, over the top. So I, I imagine Bitcoin as a wonderful store of value uh, and a um, uh, a secure savings type of. Um, if you're blessed enough to, to have. <laughs> that's right. Savings. If you're blessed enough to <laughs> accumulate savings, uh, Bitcoin uh, seems like it uh, will um, develop as a secure means for that. Uh, but it's not a money like it. Uh, and people have said that all along, you know, um, and looking at different economic philosophies. I mean, uh, I mean, I, I believe a money needs to have the capability of expanding to meet the production capacity of a community. You know, Bitcoin has a finite supply, which makes it scarce. 
and rare and valuable and deflationary. These are not um, qualities of a good money. Um, these are, you know, qualities of pot uh, potential qualities of a good store value. Um, money is something that we use every day. Uh, that's something that we want to be spending, something that we want to be using, something that, uh, again, um, should be expandable to adjust for our community's production capacity. Something that should be flowing, not like getting stagnant by yeah, sitting around. Yeah, if there's people that uh, need help with a project and there's people that um, have, you know, have services to offer, like we should be able to match them. That should not be limited, especially by a scarce money. You know, right, uh, right. I imagine Bitcoin as a very scarce money that people, you know, if you, people imagine this uh, hyper Bitcoinization world where everybody's just using Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. But the thing in that world is people aren't spending anything. You know, it's like people aren't using money. People uh, aren't collaborating. There's no more um, people aren't investing in in big companies anymore. All of a sudden, Apple is like a, would become a tiny company you know like people would divest from all these major corporations and just hold like so you believe inflationary store. policies are healthier for economic purposes. i do yeah uh i believe in yeah i do um but i don't believe that um like usury style inflationary policies that require um indefinite growth are good for us or anything you know again this uh, production capacity should be managed locally you know locally by us i mean villages it's a uh, it's really individually you know you're managing right. the production capacity of your network individually so the not village hour which is the community currency of mm -hmm. villages.io that is in a sense inflationary because there's no cap on That's how right. big this mutual credit network is. And anybody can create money. These hours. And there's yeah. always going to be people that default. So why don't you explain it real quick sure. for people unfamiliar? So um, in villages, um, you know, I'm going to open up my uh, new great description. Your spiel. Yeah, my spiel. <laughs> so, um, do you want the one with all the benefits or just the, the technical description? Let's see here. I get this great pitch here with all the benefits let's hear it all okay <laughs> villages.io is a community driven currency system that fosters trust local economic growth and sustainable development users grant interest-free credit lines to each other with the village hours currency which is valued at the local hourly wage for unskilled work this innovative system bolsters the local economy by supporting businesses, promoting job opportunities, and reducing dependence on external financial institutions. By encouraging local consumption and cooperation, Villages IO contributes to community resilience, social capital, and environmental responsibility. So we do this uh, by enabling payments to be made through trusted peers uh, that enable transactions even without direct credit relationships. So because we hit, because we're developing a trust network, you can make payments to people or it's all it, you can think of it as IOUs or and credit is really the technical term. So it's like sending credit to your friends, sending credit to your peers. Uh, that credit's backed by you. That and that credit can be used by other people that's in right. your network. Because you have a trust network, that credit can route through your peers to other people that you're not directly connected to. And that 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 network is essentially a reputation. The what would you call it? The network, the the credit limit is essentially your reputation within a trust network. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, your yeah your reputation's determined by your community. Your credit rating. Right. Your community right. credit rating right. is determined by your peers, you know, and, you know, by the value that you bring to community, not just like the profit that you bring to a bank. Right. Uh, you know, we're used to this credit, uh, the, you know, credit rating based economy. You know, we live in a reputation based economy, but our reputations are all set by banks are all sent by these, you know, multinational. Yeah. Giant. You're just a number on a screen. That's right. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, but in reality, sure. Like, I don't know if one of my friends might've bailed on their credit agreement with a bank, but I don't care. They might still be adding a lot of value to my community uh, right? <laughs> and their relationship with some big bank. I could care less about their relationship with some big bank. Right. Uh, as long as, you know, they're real, the real like emotional, uh, reputation, you know, like real life reputation and how they show up for their actual community, <laughs> you know, sure. it's like really what it's about, right? That's what really determine should be determining someone's, uh, um, uh, purchasing capacity. Right. And that sounds to me like Production a very, capacity. a very important element of a sovereign community too, is, is reputation is like the awareness of reputation and like, Hey, I want to show up with, with a good light here and you'll be rewarded for it with that, with that credit line mm -hmm. essentially. Yeah. Another thing with, uh, having a community driven reputation, um, is, you know, some organizations, um, depending on what they're using their credit for, people might not really be that attached to them paying back their obligation. Right. Um, I mean, you know, if it's, you know, nonprofit doing really positive things for the community, it's like, Oh, so what if they mm. uh, aren't paying it back or ever, you know, taking a long time or whatever, like they created this awesome thing in our community, yeah, you know, right. they're like, you know, it's investing in culture, not just in profit. And so how would that work on the platform? If they're super negative, they could just keep going negative and negative as long as people are choosing to, as to acknowledge as them. People are okay with that. Transact sure. With them. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, yeah. So that, that's like an interesting, uh, yeah. Niche, right. niche case of uh, how things can work. And we haven't seen that yet. No, we haven't villages. seen that happening yet, but, um, I imagine that that would be a yeah. likely thing to to see. Um, also, but also, it's like you're not paying back this credit with a scarce money or something that you have to earn externally. You know, you're not paying it right. back with dollars. You're not paying it back with bitcoins. You're paying it back with your time, with your services. Which is what we all. Or trying to do anyway by trying to find work. Or That's trying right. To find yeah, yeah. Gigs. You got this like third party <laughs> money that you can't create yourself for some reason. It's like only banks are allowed to create it. Yeah. Well, beyond just creating, it's just the 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 ethos of of spending it, yeah, or sharing it, or whatever it is is like it's definitely a mentality of scarcity. Yep. for most people like, even no, though even, even though, though they just keep on they printing keep them, printing them. <laughs> it's still pretty scarce like yeah and you, you, people still want to hoard their like hold on to their cash right yeah. well just like people want to hoard bitcoin uh, uh, i think people want to hoard bitcoin more than their cash you know no, no, again, what i'm saying though is bitcoin has that same problem or whatever you want to call it it is People are still hoarding it, but at least it's got integrity in the fact that it really is scarce. <laughs> <laughs> well, with dollars, people aren't actually hoarding it, though. People are investing it. You keep your money in a savings account. All that money is being invested. If right. You keep it in a savings amount account in uh, in a credit union. Then all that money is yeah. actually being being invested locally, which is great. Um, but again, there's the issue at the core of it, of the money itself. Right. 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 That, uh, is losing value is out of the control of our communities and is not, uh, in par with the co production capacity. And we have right now, we have so much more money than there is production capacity in our system, mm. which creates a really dangerous setting for, you know, potential inflation or hyperinflation crisis, which would just be, devastating and that's remedied with a mutual credit network locally yeah 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 uh, there's one great remedy having a community currency mutual credit system that's not valued in dollars that's why we chose a different unit of account we do not use dollars on villages um i mean you can create the same system and use any unit of account you can use dollars, you can use Bitcoins, you can do quarts of honey. I know there's a community mm -hmm. currency in uh, uh, Washington that uses eggs. Eggs is their unit of account. So, I mean, so you pay for everything with eggs? 
Yeah, egg credits. It's just a, a unit of account. Oh, they're not real eggs. Not real eggs. Oh, no, okay. it's just a unit of account <laughs> that it, where each unit is equal to the, the value of a local of an egg? Free, a, free range egg. Uh, but, and so you could technically generate more currency by having chickens? Sure. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Something or like honey. that. It's really more of a measurement. Mm -hmm. measurement right, value okay. than yeah. anything you know because the dollar is showing itself to not necessarily be a stable measure of value right we have to find other things that well, for are... us it's funny meanwhile in argentina they don't use the peso right they use the dollar. yeah more stable <laughs> than the argentine peso for sure <laughs> i mean most of the world is still trying to get dollars just want most of yeah. the world they just want dollars it's funny here we are all here complaining about dollars and getting into bitcoin and most well, of the we world haven't is seen them get the dollars. we haven't had an inflationary crisis here yet mm. well Thank god i mean it's but, not a crisis but we've seen it we're, we're seeing we're it. seeing it we're seeing it happen yeah. but uh has not yet shown itself to be a crisis and do you eh, think we're gonna see it well, I mean, people have been saying that. People for, have been saying it, but what do you think? Forever. I mean, I've been yeah. saying it. For, <laughs> <laughs> I've been saying that for 20 years. So, you know, I've, 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 I've become skeptical at this point. I've actually been very well. impressed, even, <laughs> even just the last few years. Like, obviously, we've seen some some shit since yeah. 2020, since that printing spree. But oh, like, yeah. I've been really impressed just the last, like, year and a half of, like... Well, inflation's actually gone down a little bit. Yeah, I know. It's Yeah, yeah so... <laughs> All these narratives, like I don't, you know, sometimes I just realize, like, yeah, we've got the right intentions, and we we see through this whole dollar thing, but there's a lot of marketing going on in the Bitcoin community uh, and whatever it might be. You I know? know we're all in our Twitter <laughs> bubbles, right? Look at we're all in our bubbles. Yeah. And, <laughs> and sometimes uh, the future catastrophes aren't what they seem. Right. But in the meantime, <laughs> a great opportunity to start learning about community currencies, start learning about Bitcoin, start learning how you can uh, be establishing more sovereignty in your own life and more uh, interdependence and sovereignty as a community. You know, social permaculture is what I call that. Mm. Um, and that's through, you know, not just through financial means, but like real trust building activities, you know, uh, like whether that is dance or um yoga or singing you know just like we got to be building trust and got to be uh feeling more connected to our communities and and the arts and creativity is a yeah nice path towards that huh well in my head they're just uh they're just amazing ways to connect with people and feel oneness with other people you know i think anything that's kind of opening up a display of vulnerability mm. naturally builds a lot of trust mm -hmm. you know when you're vulnerable with someone or you're witnessing someone being vulnerable, there's yeah. that connection. So there, yeah, so there's all these layers to um, sovereignty. You know, there's um, the individual choice layer, right, of choosing not to uh, just uh, follow the trail that was set for us. Uh, there's the um, interpersonal, like, emotional dynamic, like, building real mm -hmm. interpersonal like trust dynamics and uh real relationships learning how to communicate you know is a big one like uh i love uh uh but n like nonviolent communication Mar marshall rosenberg's work on how to um communicate with empathy uh and and be heard uh yeah so there's communication and then then technological is like kind of like the fourth layer, you know, on there, the other ones are so much more, uh, essential, I think, but, uh, technology is definitely one of those layers and learning how to use more, um, sovereign tea, sovereign, mindful technology, whether that's, um, switching over to a secure email platform like proton mm. mail or using, starting to use signal instead of Facebook messenger. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, learning how to use Bitcoin, learning how to uh, secure your own keys, building building a trust network for exchanging credit and money, um, you know, building or utilizing these new communication networks, you know, that um, don't have, you know, 
don't have uh, the traditional centralized um, middleman. Yeah, system. What Noster is a cool one that I that I've been looking at a lot. It's like the bigger Bitcoin bubble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're not Bitcoin in, culture bubble. Yeah, if you're not in the Bitcoin bubble, you probably don't know Noster, but yeah, and you probably never will. <laughs> that's the sad part. <laughs> that is the sad part. Yeah, I, I, and that's part of it too. It's like, uh, you know, education. Um, like, yeah, we just fixed one of the algorithms on villages today, but you know, will anybody? ever use that algorithm <laughs> it's like we just solved the algorithm that'll bring world peace right nobody cares or understands or <laughs> and, well, and maybe they'll use it someday <laughs> i think well that's i thought that's something i've thought about a lot when you think of shit coins right oh, man. it's like there's been so many like let's try this let's try this let's try this and up to a certain point before it's explored and you realize, oh, like Bitcoin can just do it, <laughs> like whatever. Uh, there is some validity to some of these explorations. I mean, even look, Ethereum is still going on this experiment, and I think we'll see the end of it. I hope we'll see the end of it sooner than later. Yeah. But well, it's in got the beginning, off the floor. yeah, we couldn't even do that stuff on Bitcoin. Oh no, so. even still. But, but now we're seeing Ethereum isn't working, so that's why we never anyway. I won't go, but in I the won't beginning, go there too yeah. Well, but in the beginning, <laughs> Bitcoin maximalist uh, mindset. But in the beginning, there was some important experiments to be done, and Ethereum did it, and all the things on top of it. And there's been so much learned, so much money lost, and, and I'm glad it wasn't my money that was lost. <laughs> well, some of it was. We've all lost money there, right? Like, come on, yeah, yeah. yeah. And at the end of the day, we just start to realize that okay, like they're good experiments, but they're not. They're not these solutions, but. My point is moving the energy forward. So sure, if no one uses this algorithm, the energy is moving forward thanks to your efforts. And that is contributing more to the collective here. Mm -hmm. And just people would hear this. People use it briefly. People experiment, can experiment. People can start learning. You know, because I mean, mutual credit systems can be done without any uh, technology. I mean, these types of systems have been happening for millennia. You know, the first writing you know, then 3000 BC accounts of yeah, people's our, debts and exactly like on cuneiform. And it's like, yeah, just tracking, you know, Oh, so-and-so picked up this many pounds of spices and so-and-so gave this person a donkey, whatever, stuff like that <laughs> yeah. all carved into stone. Right. You know? But now we got uh, these permanent ledgers. We don't need stone anymore. Uh, we got distributed, yeah, technologies. The time chain. <laughs> yeah. yeah, time chain. <laughs> Which go. is great if you don't have to worry about predatory governments. And oh, yeah, looking at every transaction. Well, like oh. you said, freedom of association is important. Yeah. Well, I mean, it can all be done privately now, too. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, very interesting um, dynamics. Again, dynamics of a Bitcoinization, hyper Bitcoinization world. Uh, and lots of people's minds, lots of economic philosophers will say that that will put us in an economic dark age. What and will Bitcoin? If we hyper Bitcoinization? Are, yeah, if we are living with a uh, you know, deflationary money as our soul. I have never heard anyone say that. Of exchange, it will halt development, it'll stop um stop um technological growth because people won't invest people will keep their money in their hardware wallet they're not gonna uh, why would you invest your money in apple when you're making more money just keep stashing it in your wallet right why would you invest in google when it's making more money just sitting there in your well it's funny i have a guest coming up soon uh from berlin and his <laughs> argument is that we'll never even get there because it's so silly like you, and then mm -hmm. you're saying like, if we do get there, it'll be a dark age. And this guy's right. like, but no, I people mean, people want to invest. People want to get shit done. That's who we are. We've We're always humans. used credit as money. Human hit. That's the first money. It's always existed. And Bitcoin's a new technology. It's a new concept. You know, it looks like gold, and people have used gold for a long time too in lots of places. But it is gold is not as universal as credit is. You know, if you meet somebody and they're new to this world, an alien or something, you're like, oh, I'll give you this chunk of gold. If you help me with this project, they'll be like, 
what is this metal? I'll just, I mean, I got this lab in my freaking spaceship. I can, I can just, just make alchemize I can, that. I can shit. Alchemize that, right? <laughs> who knows, right? <laughs> it's like, who cares? why do I want this stupid shiny metal? Oh, shi- oh, it's shiny. All right. <laughs> uh, 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 Same with Bitcoin. It's like, why would I want this thing? It's just a scarce unit. What's it even backed by other? Oh, other people. If they don't know that other people accept it, that's really all what makes it valuable. But if you say, hey, uh, can I get an hour? Can I get your help for an hour on this project? And I'll help you for an hour on a project at a later time. I'm like, duh. <laughs> you know who does, who doesn't understand like the value right. of that? well ho- hopefully an alien would yeah yeah oh uh, yeah an alien yeah right. anybody would like help we don't i don't need help but. right oh you'll get me back great mm. sounds good <laughs> it's mm. a deal <laughs> well uh one last thought and then we can close it up that just makes me think of the whole <laughs> remember ender's game or even i think dune plenty of these old sci-fi uh, books and movies they're, the aliens are they're always these like hives they're like bees where they have a centralized like mothership a queen bee but then everything they're doing as individuals all are for the hive mm-hmm. so it makes me think of you know an alien comes down and you go, yeah i'll trade you an hour of my time and I, maybe that alien wouldn't understand maybe because they wouldn't understand that's just what you right? do anyway yeah sure it's not even about like well why would you talk about that that's just mm. what you do maybe that's where we're going yes yeah, maybe going. beyond the numbers beyond the checks and balances to pure trust like uh yeah pure trusted abundant i've always believed that's where culture, we're going gift culture that sounds great. pretty optimistic and i think yeah. it would take a long time at the same time Things Baby don't steps. need to take that long. Well, slipstreams and wormholes are real. You know what I mean? There can be a lot of social evolution that happens in a short period of time. Yeah. yeah it's like again, Moore's law. I think making the choice and then developing the relationships, right? Those are the two first steps. Making the choice to to step away from the And trust in path. yourself. Yeah. Make that choice to trust in yourself. Right. To trust in yourself, to make your own decisions. Uh you know, to know that you're trusting the authority of your own consciousness. Right. right? Yeah. Any, uh, where can people find you? Anything you want to shout out? My name is Daniel Levy. You can find me on Twitter. DNA levity is my, uh, Twitter handle. Um, villages.io is our community currency project. And you can also explore, uh, my other uh, purpose project, Humandalas. Humandalas.com. Yeah. Sovereign states of mind.